Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 49 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will probably read them here because the phone calls never stop on Strange World where I normally would take care of them. So let's get right to it. First email is called The Dome. Goes a little something like this. Hey Mark, so what is outside of the dome? Is the flat earth floating in space? Do you believe God is the creator of this flat earth and dome? Question mark. Well, uh, and that's from Paul. Uh, old question, but a goodie. Uh, what, I, what do I think is outside of the dome? I think it's either more versions of this or an unlimited dimension. You pick. Is the flat earth floating in space? No. Why does there have to be space at all? Just because you see space and you have seen it since you were six years old doesn't mean that there is space. That is just conditioning. Remember, everything the mainstream throws at you, every story from NASA tells you that there is space. And that right there is a pretty good indicator that it's wrong. And do you believe God is the creator of this flat earth and dome? Yes, I do. But uh, the same, the, the follow up to that is who actually maintains the dome? Is it some sort of divine power or did God subcontract out the work? Yeah, anyway, let's move on. This one's called uh, Dominic out of Belgium. Dear M. Sargent, is there a way I can help? If you need help of any kind, I want you to know I will leave everything I have for the discovery of the truth. Can I do something or help in any way? Maybe you have a lot of people sending you questions and wanting to help even if they can't. The world is a lie and we need to wake up. I will find a way sooner or later. Maybe you're the reason in my life to help me understand or do finally something. We only live that short of time. Let's do something with it. Let's write history. Yours sincerely, Dominic Perez out of Belgium. And thank you, Dominic. Uh, you know, the best way to help right now is just getting the word out in whatever way is most comfortable to you, meaning if you've got a talent, if you've got something, you don't, you don't have to necessarily follow the leader and do what other people do. Everybody, everybody's got their role in this. Uh, some people do interviews well. Some people do podium speeches well. Some people do street interviews well. Some people have a real flair for making cool, cool, highly polished videos. Whatever's good for you, use that talent and apply it to Flat Earth and see what comes, comes out of it. Moving on. This email's called truth uh dear M mr sergeant i commend you for your work in exposing the flat earth suppression below i give further evidence of flat earth and god and explain gospel prophecy which may be of interest to you unfortunately uh it goes way way too long it is that letter is huge if you guys write like three pages i'm not gonna be able to read it on here i just want to mention uh it was from john paliza and he, he goes into a lot of history of the world, but, uh, but thank you for that. Thank you, that's great. I should have probably scanned that one a little better. This one's called Clues Series. Mark, hello, just going through the Flat Earth Clues series you put out on YouTube, and they are very easy for me to understand. My children think I am seriously disturbed dinosaur, and two of them who are beautiful, normally kind, and beneficent, beneficent? and have science degrees are annoyed with me, but I had questions since I was a child. Unfortunately, I am of the generation who didn't ask questions. And when I did once ask a teacher when I was in junior school, why there are still monkeys, if the monkeys evolved into us, I was told to stand up in class while the teacher berated me and told everyone what an idiot I was. I noticed he didn't answer my question though, but I didn't ask anyone again. So I'm getting some satisfaction from your evidence. Don't know what I will do with it now, but I just wanted to thank you for all your sterling work. That's the first time I've heard anyone actually is sterling, nice. And I, if I have questions as time goes on, may I ask you them? Kindly yours, Marilyn. And yes, Marilyn, you can ask me questions like you did just then. Just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net or you can leave a message on my phone, 303-494-6631 or call the other line, which is 720-897-6111. Uh, this one is called Suggestion. Mark, have you seen this video on the Joe Rogan Show? And it's a link to a Joe Rogan video called Joe Rogan versus Eddie Bravo. He did argument over flat earth theory. It was done in April of this year. Wow, it's got 1.5 million views. It's pretty good. 
And the follow-up to that says, do you think you could get on the show? I think you could debate this, Stacy. I do not think I will ever be invited on the Joe Rogan show, mostly because I call him out on the NASA problem. Remember, there's uh, uh, some videos out there. Uh, the, one of the most popular is called the Joe Rogan Mystery, which is, remember, Joe Rogan used to be a really solid conspiracy guy. He was first an actor, then a comedian, and then got into conspiracies. And then one month he went dark, just vanished. And when he came back, he wasn't a conspiracy guy anymore. He had a brand new show on Sci-Fi Network for a year. And he the first episode, he apologized for everything he ever said badly about NASA. So did somebody get to him? Pretty safe bet. Point is, is I will call him out on that. I'm sorry, there's no producer. That you, if if George Nori and other people want to say that you that I can't talk about NASA, that's one thing. But you can't expect me to go in and sit down across from Joe Rogan after I've mentioned many, many times that I think he's been compromised and not ask that question. It, it, what's what's the point of even going there? I would it would destroy whatever credibility I have. Anyway. Moving on, this one's called Survival Guide. Hi Mark, I emailed you in the past. If you could send me the Survival Guide, I so totally know you are one busy guy and I'm sure my email must have gotten away from you. When and if you get a chance, could you please send me one? Uh, as always, I am a true believer, I'm sorry, a true follower of yours. Don't follow me, just listen to me from time to time. Keep it flat, brother, and that's from Costa. And yeah, I sent him a... Fl um, a survival guide same thing just email me anywhere in the title just say i want your free survival guide it's only like two megs i'll just fire it off to you because you know if it helps you great my only suggestion if you're gonna get the survival guide is print off a copy because how dumb would that be if the power goes out and then the only survival guide you have is on your slowly but surely dying cell phone hmm? or even worse you put it on a cloud somewhere anyway this one's called you know Hello, Mark. My name is Anthony. I did cinematography for many years. I am very interested in your information. I would like to maybe help if I could. I still have most of my gear. I would like to chat on the phone once or twice if that's possible. I have no ulterior motive. I really just want the truth. Thanks for your time. Kindest regards, Anthony Quinn. I'm sure no relation to the actual... I wonder if Anthony Quinn is actually still alive, the actor, famous actor. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Um, I, I don't know if you can help using your camera right now other than don't, you know, if you have a camera, go to the beach. That, that's why I suggest to every, anybody that has a decent camera, go to the beach, start filming stuff. Tell me what you see. Uh, of course, that beach has to look across, you know, a fairly decent sized body of water. But that's what I would suggest if you have uh, some decent video gear. This one's called, what's it called? How to control my thoughts about people thinking we are weird. Mark, can I please get your views on the Admiral Tablets of Truth that I have been studying in correlation with the overpowering government? I believe they found the tablets and have used the wisdom within to gain total world control. Also, the tablets have been responding to my readings. Thoughts? Thanks again, you beautiful mind. And I don't really have any opinion on the Emerald Tablets, Tablets of Toth because I've never heard them before, or maybe I have in a different context, but I've never done any research on it. So sorry, I don't, I don't really have an opinion on it. This one's called Check This Out. Mark was watching Rob Skiba, and while I was looking at one of the flat earth diagrams showing the firmament and the deep and the labeling of the other parts of it, it occurred to me that this looks more like flat earth inside of a ball of water with some kind of sealed canopy to keep the earth dry more than it does a canopy over just a round disc. Looks like more of a flat earth inside a ball of water with some kind of sealed canopy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, why not, why not make it underwater? Water's above versus the water's below. And as Rob Skiba pointed out, it would be the ultimate safeguard against us ever trying to get out of this thing which was if we if we did penetrate the dome it would just flood and, and kill us so interesting uh yeah I, and i have heard an explanation like that but yeah sure very possible this one's called pre-launch view and oh it's just a reminder that the uh i'm sorry it's from gary heather out in uk and we'll just do a plug for it since I got the email up that the UK convention 
is now officially up. So you can look it up at on online at Flat Earth Convention UK dot digital incubator dot co or just type in the, the Flat Earth UK convention and you'll get all the information for it. It's gonna be next April. I will be attending and speaking at it. I'll be one of two Americans. They're gonna be there. I believe the other one is going to be the Morgyle. So fantastic. Great stuff. This one's called Open Minds. Hey Mark, my name is Jake and I've been researching Flat Earth for almost two years now. I have some ideas of my own and have no one to talk to about it. Would love to talk with someone that has an open mind. Jake, I guarantee there are Flat Earthers around you right now. No matter where you are, no matter what city you are in the United States or outside the United States, there's flat earthers around you. You just don't know it because we're not, we don't have special custom cool jackets or patches or stickers on our car or anything like that. I mean, yeah, there's people, you know, slowly but surely getting out there with t-shirts and I try to wear as many flat earth shirts as I can. And it has worked for me because I've run into people who are other flat earthers. I put a thing out on Craigslist or if you want... Uh, just type in your city name and Flat Earth into YouTube or Google, and you will probably find a, um, a major city next to you. And you'll, you'll probably find that there was a meetup that had happened. And if there isn't a meetup that, ha that has happened, uh, please, by all means, think about trying your own. It's not hard. Just pick a restaurant. You don't even have to call the restaurant ahead of time. Well, I mean, it'd be nice if you did. Say, hey, I got a table, a back room for like 20 people. And then email me. And I will make the promotion for you. I've done it many times in the past. In fact, I just did two this morning. Both for Colorado, which was weird. One for Colorado Springs and one for Fort Collins. Where I used to be for 20 years. This one's called The Jigsaw Put Together in All Its Glory. Hi, Mark. I can and will put my name to everything I say and will definitely come on your show and put this awesome but rather frightening jigsaw together in, as I say, all of its glory. We can chat any time, like prior to coming onto your show, but I seriously want the recognition of the final <laughs> pieces into place. Seriously, you, sir, want the answer? Please come talk with me, mind blown, guaranteed. This may come across as being a tad comical, but, sir, I am on cloud nine at the moment, as I believe I now have all the answers. Regards, Gary. Uh, recommend, recommendation to you, Gary, make a video on this, and then you know, put it out on YouTube. You don't need me to necessarily, necessarily promote it. If it's that big, if it's that mind-blowing, just put it out there yourself. Or, I don't know, here's a tip, tell me about it. Instead of just saying, I've got the answers, I've got the answers, just put me on your show. It's like, well, okay, no, I, I, granted, my show is small, but nobody's gonna put you on your put them on your show just because you say you've got the answers. I'm sorry, that's, that's, uh, that's marketing, that's just teasing. That's, that's all that is. So, sorry, let's move on. This one's called, What Happened to Interviews? Mark, I remember your show on YouTube had a fair amount of interviews with people that were in the military and aviation and the like, but haven't seen them recently. Is it something only on your site now, paywall? No, no, not at all. Uh, everything in Flat Earth is, seems to come in waves. Uh, everything that I've done has really been unsolicited. So all uh, most of the subject matter experts came in a big wave, just one after the other after the other. They all contacted me almost simultaneously, and we did all those shows, and that was that was it, and that's all I needed. And so they're out there forever, and and they help people every day. But uh, when it comes to other subject matter experts, I, for whatever reason, people don't like replicating other people. You know, if you don't have anything to add, you know, if you're a surveyor, you're in one of the branches of the military, or you're a pilot, or an engineer, I, most people don't, you know, it's like, well, it's already been done. So they didn't bother doing it. So, But no, no, there's no content out there that I'm, that I'm hiding from people. This one's called Awakening. Hi, Mark. My name is Tiffany, and I have a real life-changing story I would love to share with my newfound brothers when you have just a moment. I would write it, but I can't look at cell phones, computers, or TV for too long without an exciting headache, nor can I see that well. But that's, some, that's because a few months ago I couldn't even do this. Just let me know when there would be an appropriate time to contact you, or you may contact me at this phone number. I want to get involved with the Flat Earth, but am limited due to circumstances. Thank you to all my flat earthers and truth seekers. Be blessed and keep moving forward no matter what God hears and is listening. 
All right, Tiffany, I will try to get a hold of you and see what's going on. See, her thing's a little better than the last guy. Last guy says, I have the answer. But in her case, she goes, I'd like to talk to you more about this, but I am physically unable. Uh, thank you, by the way, for, for making the effort and, and sending the first email. This one's called The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Hi, Mark. This is Grant Brass from Melbourne, Australia. I was listening to the show you and Patricia call The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, where the both of you read out the bad comments people leave you. Look, I'm a huge fan of you and Patricia, but I don't see how reading bad comments out like that is good for you or Patricia or Flat Earth. By reading these comments, you are just adding fuel to the fire, and I think it's better to just ignore this type, these types of comments completely. I've just always been a big fan and trying to stay positive rather than be negative. But that's just my opinion. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of you and Patricia. Anyway, keep up the good work and stay flat. I, I know where you're, where you're coming from, Grant, and I... I'm kind of torn. Sa same sort of circumstances. I, I, I hate feeding the trolls. I, it's one of those big rules. That you don't do it. Do not feed the trolls, if all possible. And if you're in the mood from time to time, you can poke them. That's not exactly feeding them. You know, sometimes it's, it's you know, whap it on the side of the cage just to make sure they're in there. That's always good. But, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. At the same time, it's sort of cathartic. Where you, you're you're reading things. That's why we drink while we're while we're doing that show. It's like, all right, you know, let's let's see what's out there, and we handpick them. It's not like we we go through the worst ones. We don't read hate speech. We don't read um, uh, comments that go after demographics. You, you know what I'm talking about? The real awful stuff. We we read the funny ones if we can. And again, we're not encouraging people to troll us. We we're just showing us like, look, we can laugh this off. Trolls don't get to me. They don't. Uh, you know, why, why would they, yeah, it's kind of the opposite for me, you know, um, what's, what's the great movie quote is that sticks and stones, uh, may break your bones, but words do permanent damage. That's the opposite with me. Words don't do anything to me. Sticks and stones. Well, of course they hurt. So God help you. If you, you try to take a shot at me anyway, moving on. Thank you, by the way, Grant from Melbourne, Australia. This one's called, if it will open. Flat Earth Clues 2. Mark, regarding the bit on Bird, the show, the long jeans is pronounced long jeans, not, yeah, long jeans. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I pronounced that wrong. Well, I didn't know. I, I wasn't alive in 54. I know because I used to watch the show. So this dates this guy. By the way, who do you see at the top of this pyramid of deception? I see it as Satan and his minions, which are out to discredit God and everything the Bible teaches, such as the great circle of the flat earth. Would you agree? Yeah, I would. Yeah, sure. If you want to go top level. Yeah, that's what I would. Great series. Keep up this superb effort towards truth. That's from Sean. So, yes, for anyone that's uh, the correction, what he, the initial correction was the Admiral Byrd show, which he was on, which is spelled L-O-N-G-I-N-E-S, is pronounced long jeans, not long jines. There you go. This one's called Survival Book. Mark, you convince me, please send me a survival guide. Is not an electronic guide? Yes, it is. If not, send to... And she or he gives his address out in Cloverdale, California. Thanks. Love your vid. Keep up the good work for a good cause. And so I better send him a quick thing. It's like, uh, less did I already send you this guide, Mark? Hopefully I did. Normally I would. I I'm pretty sure I did. But eh, anyway. This one's called First Aid Pamphlet. Mark, I'm a teacher, football, powerlifting coach, flat earth, truth seeker. Keep up what you're doing, man. It's literally working. Can you see it? Can you hear it? Can you effing feel it? He actually said effing, E-F-F-I-N-G. Thanks for helping wake me up to this amazing truth. I'd like to interview you one day. I stay low key because I have a master's degree and I'm one certification test away from being a principal. I want change, man. I try to do my part, Mark, but I'm also scared to fully promote it. Yeah, I would be too if you're a principal. I'm an ex-high school great who came back home, college all-conference sack leader. However, I do flat smack those that I feel is, is ready to hear truth. Anyways, keep, the, keep up truth. If I can help in any way, please let me know. Please feel to read this on your show. Joey. And I'll write back to Joey real fast. I'll say... 
Thanks, Joey. Just read this on QA49. Will be out today. If you, uh, yeah. Just mark. Sorry for the loud typing, guys. The microphone literally sits right next to the keyboard when I do that. And trying to click, trying to click. And come on, come on. Uh, great, everything's like my my email's locking up. That's fantastic. Seriously. Good lord. Okay. And my email just locked up. Fantastic. That is super great. Let's open this again. Sorry guys for the delay. I'm not going to edit this out. We're just going to go right back into it. Access my account. Click on my email. Please don't ask me for my password again. Come on. Do not know what's taking this thing so long. I should have something funny to say during the gaps, but I don't. Sorry about that. All right, let's get all the way back down to where I was, which is sometime in September. Come on, get all the way down there. All right, this one's called Survival Guide. Hey, <laughs> love the show. Keep it flat. Please send me the Survival Guide. The simplest facts about the flat Earth are the hardest, one to, hardest ones to deny. Give that to the peanut gallery. Ha, LOL. Keep up the good work. Patricia is the one for you, but you already know. Oh, that's awfully nice. That's from James. Thanks, James. And let's see if that email I was going to send to Joey is gone. Yes, it is. Good. Let's scroll all the way down. There's so many emails. Sorry, guys. Every time that I do that, I have to scroll to the bottom of the email list, and it takes a while. Okay. Next one is also called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your efforts in spreading truth and for the Survival Guide. Looking forward to meeting you at the conference. That's from Alma Ortega. Thank you for that. This one's called Moon Projection. Mark, I've been monitoring some very strange behaviors of the moon the last few nights. Love the work you do. I like your thoughts on this. First thing that came to mind was the Truman Show spotlights. Ha ha. And wow, yeah, the moon had a weird spotlight effect on it. That's interesting. Don't know if the camera lens, are so, of course, but yeah, it looks, it almost looked, yeah, where the beams are coming out on the uh, east and west side, if you know if it was flat in front of you, you know, north being up and south being down, the 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 beams of the moon are coming out from, from the sides. Oh, that's weird. That's really, really interesting stuff. Again, don't know if it's a lens effect, but it's still interesting. Thank you for that. Oh, there's a movie on it too. You know what? I'm going to save that one because I haven't watched the movie on this. Sometimes I just don't get to it. All right, this one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I would really like to know a few things. How do I become a member of the Flat Earth Society? Uh, I have no idea. I don't even know which society to recommend anymore because the one that I joined before I wrote the clues collapsed, imploded on itself. I heard it's been rebuilt. Uh, it was it was um, done by a guy named Shenton out of Hong Kong. That's the one who sent me up my certificate, and I still have it. That was the one also that Eric pulled away from, started his own, his own thing, the International Flat Earth Research Society, and collapsed that one at least for a year and, or a year and a half. So I would need, you don't even need to join the society anymore. Just get on YouTube and start joining some of the Hangouts. You'll find there, there's something for everybody. So you will find community members out there that will suit your taste. He also says, what else can I really do to help the cause besides killing myself just posting to Facebook? <laughs> yeah, join Hangouts in YouTube. That's why I suggest. Makes me furious how people just don't care or won't listen. What else can I join? What else can I do? John. Spreading the word the best you can, but sizing up your opponents. That's, that's the best thing you can do. Getting the word out there. Sharing videos with people. Coming at them sideways. Uh, writing to different radio stations, television stations, talk shows, podcasts, saying, hey, I think you should interview such and such for Flat Earth. It does not have to be me. Honestly, I'd love if other people were interviewed on Flat Earth besides me. I, I know I've done a lot of them, but there's, there's some really great people out there that I, I think could, 
could be a, a, a great interview uh, potential and assets to, to, the, to the community. Uh, this one's also called Survival Guide. Man, I get a lot of survival guides uh, this last month. What the heck happened? Hello, Mark. I so enjoy your program, and you recently reminded me to request a copy of your survival. This is my request. Stay strong and keep up the amazing work. Kindest regards, Bronca Moore. You're welcome, Bronca, and I'm pretty sure I sent it to you. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I'm just about to read your book, Flat Earth Clues. I remember as a child, I'm 50 now, being told the earth was round, and if it was flat, I'd fall off the edge. I never really, It never really sat with me. I left it at that and joined society and its round earth. With advancements in technology, along came the internet, and my insatiable appetite for reading up on conspiracies was fed. Like yourself, I left Flat Earthers alone. Embarrassment? I'm not sure. Indoctrinated to believe the earth was round? Definitely. But I kept coming back again and again to my own feelings. The earth is flat. I'm looking forward to reading this title. Many thanks, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky, for buying the book. If you guys want to buy the Flat Earth Clues book, by the way, it's a great Christmas gift. You can just go to Amazon.com, type in Flat Earth Clues. You'll find it. This one is called The Flat Earth. Mark, hi, I am French Young, and I'm asking about The Flat Earth. I want to know if you have something special to tell me about that. I know the flat is not a globe, that just a joke. She is flat. Oh, oh, I got, I got it. Yeah. And I'm sure about that, Mr. Sergeant. I want to know everything you know about this subject and the secret of the Admiral Bird. Sorry for my weak English, and thank you lots for your answer. I'm waiting. You, thank you. I, well, you're very welcome. Hope I don't know if this person's going to know the show. Hopefully, they by this time they've they've dug into it a whole bunch of different ways. Always tricky with ones like that. This one's called Minnesota Flat Fair Billboard Photo. Holy crap! Did I miss this? Hang on. Is there a is there a photo at the billboard? Uh, I don't know if I remember getting this. Uh, Mark C attached Minnesota Flat Fair Billboard Photo. Please add this to your collection, Jeff. Uh, I gotta write back in there right now and say, "Oh, hey, Jeff. Sorry, I just looked at this now for QA forty nine. We'll add to my slideshow. Thanks, Mark. And I will put that into my folder of things I've got to do. It's a it's a billboard photo which will be now added to the slideshow of uh, Strange World." This one's called Under the Dome. Hello, Mark. My name is Stephen Fullen. Lately, I have been convinced the Earth is actually flat as I watch a short clip on the theory. After months of constant research and videos, I became a huge believer. I just finished watching your video Under the Dome. I know this was taken about two years ago, so I did a little research, but came up with nothing. My question is, have there been any new operations near the Antarctica that you are aware of? I do not know of any new operations in Antarctica, so no. Thank you for that. Another survival guide. Got that one off. I won't even read that. It was just one line. Another one. Prep me, please. From Donna in Las Vegas. I don't know what it is about this month. Or last month. This one's called Government Fat Earth Pick. On a Mark, on a recent documentary, Abandoned, a cable show that highlights giant projects that have been abandoned, there was a V-2-type rocket launched in about 1956 to approximately 78 miles. The photo and film clearly shows a flat Earth. I don't have the resources to recover the film record, but possibly you have the ability to access this copy of Abandoned and get the footage. I did not know that's actually the name of the movie. I'm pretty sure, though, we, we have seen it on YouTube, the V-2 1956 launch. Best of luck to you, and that's from Stan. Thank you, Stan, for that. This one's called Moon Rover. Hi, Mark. I enjoy your talks on Flat Earth. I've been delving into this for the last six months, and there is a lot of merit to it. One thing that bothers me is impact craters from large asteroids and meteors, as well as the auroras in the North and South Poles. If there is a firmament, how do these things get through? Another thing, wait, how do what get through? The impact craters. Oh, asteroids and meteors? Yeah, show me where one is recently hit that's really dug in a big crater. I don't know if any meteors and asteroids recently, and I'm by that I mean our civilization, 
have gotten through and landed and done any major impacts. Show me some some decent um, decent sized impact craters. Not not that old one in Arizona, not the Gulf of Mexico, uh, not the soft stuff in in South America. Show me something recently. I'm I'm beginning to think now that the impacts, the big impacts from meteors and asteroids are done between civilizations b- between like version four and five and five and six so there you go oh i'm sorry the the, the rest of this is uh, if there's a firmament how do these things get through another thing which seems quite obvious with the moon landings is where on earth did they put the moon buggy in the landing module and how did it unload yeah if you watch it they supposedly folded it up it was folded kind of like a box and then stuck to the side of the capsule. That's that's the rumor. But when they unloaded it, it was very fuzzy and very dark. And they never did show. You know, they should have showed a time lapse of how they put it together because it, you know, they put it together perfectly. So not only did you have to be an astronaut, you also had to be an auto mechanic, which uh, I'm not buying. No way. Uh, this one's called Hi Mark. A question from a new flat earther. Mark, recently my uncle got me into flat earth and I'm completely obsessed now with the idea of it. I love your videos along with Jaronism, Patricia Steer, D. Marble, among others. Recently I moved in with some friends who are also conspiracy theorists and I was nervous, excited to bring up flat earth theory to them. But because I'm so obsessed, I brought it up within a couple of days of moving in. They believe that the theory was invented to distract from the secret space program. That would be Richard Hoagland's world. I haven't done much research on it. What are your thoughts? Best regards, Margo. Uh, yeah, Margo. That, Richard Hoagland, that's pretty much what I said. There's a reason why I was supposed to be scheduled to do a debate with him last year. Early last year, I believe. Or was it late last year? I can't remember. It was 2016. And his theories are one of the few groups of theories which do not dovetail into Flat Earth. Meaning he believes there's a secret space program. There are millions of people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands of people living on Mars. That paradigm does not coexist with flat earth because it can't, because you can't land on the moon at all, let alone get people to live up there. So where's he going to go with this? And and Richard, remember, he's in his 70s. So he's coming to the end of, of his thing. And he backed out of the debate. He was supposed to debate me on a show. I think it was Dark 30 Radio. And he backed out. It didn't even formally back up. He was a no-show. He confirmed in the beginning. It's like, oh, yeah. And then once he figured out what he was up against, he backed out of it entirely because he was going to lose. So, no, no secret space program. The secret, the secret of the space program is there's no space. Or the short version, the secret is there's no space. That's the secret program. But thank you for that. This one's called Enclosed World Game Reset. Hey, Mark, do you think with all the natural disasters happening in so many places currently that there is a reset of some kind being programmed in here? It seems sometimes, like you've mentioned, we live in kind of a video game and someone is resetting the game for sure. I couldn't agree more that the Earth would want to be in balance as we all should be, but the TV that is used to program us from the evil elite have so many corrupted. It really is fascinating and yet unfortunate that all it takes is great people in power to, I'm sorry, greater people in power, to spill their rhetoric rhetoric around in our minds, drink it up, and build a belief we tote around as our own opinion. So they can switch up the programming daily, hourly, etc. I pray there are some more interesting programs out there for people to take notice of like Flat Earth. It really has me glued, and I hope not yet another false opinion that I subscribe to hook, line, and sinker. Peace in, not out. Later, Jay. And I believe her name is Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. This one's called About the Eclipse and Sun. Mark, I have a very legit question, but I'm almost afraid to even ask it. Seems like it would make people realize something scary or that they don't want to realize. I went over the flat earth idea with my husband, ex-military brainiac, and he sort of thinks I'm bonkers. But when I pointed this out to him post-eclipse, he became almost angry, as though I lifted a curtain he didn't want me to. How do I reach you? I'd like to speak with you. Thanks, Becky. Becky, my phone number is literally in the description of every single video that's out there. So 
uh, and I know this because I, I mass update all the description pages simultaneously. If you're wondering why all my descriptions look the same, it's because I go into YouTube. I'm not going to do it individually. I say, change every description to this. Go. So there's 800 and something places where my phone number is. It's not hard to find me. This one's called Advice. Hi, Mark. I appreciate your work, but please use English correctly. Oh, boy. Here we go. And speak more distinctly. Effective communication depends on it. It also makes a better impression. Examples, drag, verb, to pull along with difficulty or effort, to haul. Dragged, past tense of drag. Drug, a noun, a chemical substance such as a narcotic, narcotic or hallucinogen that affects the central nervous system, causing changes in behavior. Drugged, drugging, or drugged, Transitive verb to mix a drug with food, drink, etc. Pharmacology to administer a drug to or pharma. It's the same word, pharmacology. To st oh, same word, different definition. To stupefy or poison with or as if with a drug. Thanks for your consideration, Marlo. Okay, Marlo, if you're going to throw that at me, you got to give me the example where I screwed it up. So, be it drag or dragged or drug or drugged or drugging or drugged, you, you got to tell me where I screwed it up. I, 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 again, appreciate it. You know, I early on said like, uh, uh, in, fact, in fact, even in this email here, I used to say et cetera, and it's actually et cetera. So there you go. Thank you for that though. I actually didn't even cover Flat Earth at all. Quick question. Hi, Mark. What is your take on why someone can't use a telescope from New York to see across the Atlantic Ocean and see any land or something on land in Europe? The answer is because the atmosphere that we breathe is more like a soup. It's really like a thin version of the water we swim in. Be it, you know, a lot of people don't know, you could ask the person on the street. The, the, what you're breathing in is only 20% oxygen. It is 80% nitrogen. And I know there's some trace gases in there, but I'm, I'm just going to go 80-20. It's easier for people to remember. So 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and it's pretty thick. It's pretty soupy. So if you want to look from New York across the Atlantic Ocean, if you could make it a vacuum, if you could remove the atmosphere entirely, I'm pretty sure you could see across it, as long as there wasn't enough weather. Maybe get a little bit of a tower to get over, you know, make sure there's the water is absolutely perfectly calm. Of course, if it was a vacuum, it'd probably be frozen. So yeah, if it was a frozen, perfectly flat ocean all the way across, I think you could. Absolutely. That's from Jan. Thanks, Jan. This one's from Josh. It's called Pathetic Bill Nye. As fake as everything else he does. And he sends me a link. And it's called Bill Nye on Shark Tank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bill Nye. Yeah, look that up if you get a chance. Yeah, Bill Nye, remember, he is not a scientist. He does not have a master's degree in anything. He has a bachelor's degree in, uh, I believe, mechanical engineering. And that's it. And, and but he did not use that very much. I mean, afterwards, he became an actor almost immediately. Look up his biography. For a, He worked for a small comedy troupe out of Seattle, Washington called Almost Live. I know this because I'm in Seattle. I remember growing up and watching this guy. And, you know, it was, it was an okay show. And then he lucked out. He did a little Bill Nye skit on Almost Live. And then Disney, when they were trying to look for new characters, decided they would sign him on. And he worked for Disney doing Bill Nye the Science Guy for a few years. And I think like five years. And it syndication. There's so many kids that remember that now. But the, he's just a science educator, meaning he's a guy that likes talking about science. I like talking about science. Does that mean I'm a science educator? No, no. Anyway, that's from Josh from Uber Flat Earth. He's an Uber driver that's also a flat earther. This one's called Need Help With These Questions. Hey, Mark, can you help with the following questions? Got them from a coworker. Question, why does water circle the drain counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere along with hurricanes and tornadoes rotating in the same counterclockwise direction while these phenomena are reversed rotating in the clockwise direction in the, nor in the southern hemisphere? Also, why don't hurricanes or tornadoes cross the equator if the Earth is flat? Why don't hurricanes or tornadoes cross the equator? If they, That's actually a more interesting question. Uh, I don't know. Is that true? Is that true that hurricanes or tornadoes never cross the equator? Well, tornadoes never probably because uh, the weather conditions aren't, aren't the same. Remember, tornadoes are not everywhere. 
Even the United States is a very narrow band of tornado-y area. Most of it's in Oklahoma. I do not recommend living there. And if you are there, get out. But as far as the, uh, the drains, I'd like to address that real quick. You want to look up some interesting, interesting stuff. Look up a YouTube channel called, it's a big YouTube channel, millions of people on it, called Smarter Every Day, where he did the swirling water test or the swirling toilet water test or whatever it was. And he did a, sim- it was one of the best scientific tests I've ever seen on the, on, on the subject, which is he did a simultaneous test with a guy with the exact same equipment in the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. He had, he had basically his version of Smarter Every Day in the Southern Hemisphere doing this. And they took a kid's waiting pool and they customized it and filled it up to the brim and put a special drain in the center, very center of it, and let the water sit. You know, the water was the same temperature, more or less. They let it sit for hours so it was perfectly still. And to make sure they didn't disturb the water, they used food coloring and dropped in, you know, north, south, east, and west on it then pulled the plug simultaneously and watched the water and seen if one went clockwise and one went counterclockwise. And it was so, so slight that he, he basically came at toward, you know, and, and the test was so, uh, it was so meticulously done. He basically came at the end and said, look, whatever you're seeing with toilets and sinks and all that, it's got to be because of the, the, uh, the drain direction and how the water is going into the drain. You know, we can do this now, you know, depending on how you spin, you know, the, how you curve the water going into the drain. He goes, it's, it doesn't exist. Basically saying it's a myth. He, he, he goes, whatever, whatever people saying about the, the toilets in the North and South or the drains, he goes, it's not there. And I trust this. He is not a flat earther, but when he did this test, you got to watch it for yourself. Tell me what you think. So that's, that's what I re- would recommend. Interesting, though, about that hurricane thing going over the equator. I thought that was interesting. So let's see. Here we got this one's called Flat Earth. It's Mark, I know that this is totally possible in absence of the true light being learned of our history would have in lively, consistent experience is. I don't know if that's a sentence or not. All it boils down to is duality from 2000 years conditioned by first householders. Breeding competitive dissonance, which targets us, consequence of lack in absolute knowledge. I am unclear with how the sun falls into the flat earth. I am unable to truly conceptualize exactly how the sun yang is in here with us. What evidence is of this as our one reality? The moon I can hold in the dome theory such closer than a peer. English cannot be his first language. I'm reading this verbatim. Uh, the pure moon as in woman simply ah I am holding word for a better time of no doubt in earth be in flat as surrounded you know this was what this reminds me of this reminds me of Tropic Thunder <laughs> when Robert Downey Jr. is trying to speak was it Chinese oh and he's just butchering it that's it's, it's, I'm, I'm having a hard time with this with regards to share in this in average educated conversation, technically, you can just keep sailing south anyway and hit the wall. Mind is nearly blown after the last time I said I'd even think of elevation in thus v- v- of molecular play. I don't know if this guy's writing a song or not. It's, it's written like a letter. This is my small local PG of what fallen no to lesser he's got a facebook group feel open to share any of this knowledge for us in light conduits shells by one exist dharma purified now since been trained in kundalini research institute yoga teacher prayer is peace on mother earth one reality respectively also known as sat namji but but the email says it's coming from joshua so I, I don't even know how to respond to that. I read it. That's that's about as far as I'm going to go with it, though. Uh, let's see. This one's called Mark Hightower enters flat Earth theory controversy by starting a blog. Mark, once I watched Scientists Exposed on YouTube for the first time a couple of days ago, I felt comp- compelled that I need to get my views out there. At this point, I am not finding current flat Earth theory arguments convincing but I will continue doing my own research analysis and experiments and following the issue. And he's got a blog called tmarkhightower.blogspot.com. I look forward to hearing from you sincerely. 
not surprisingly, T. Mark Hightower. Cool. Moving on. This one's called Queries. And yes, next Friday. Did I already talk to this person? Yep, sorry. That was just an interview request. This one's called FE. Mark, I emailed you a bit ago and was a bit disappointed. I didn't hear anything back. Of course, it might have helped if I included the 23 in your email address. What a maroon. Yeah, it's not msargent at comcast.net. It's msargent23 at comcast.net. No, I did not pick the 23 deliberately. It was randomly chosen uh, by Comcast for me uh, about 23 years ago now. Spooky. Hey, mister, you've heard the story over and over. I watched conspiracy videos and recommended for me and YouTube kept loading up with flat earth videos that I studiously avoided. Finally, I thought, whatever, I'll just watch a couple so I know how stupid the whole idea is. Yep, that's exactly how I did it. And yeah, I'm stuck. Go to debunk, walk away a believer a few days later. I've listened to your radio shows, really enjoyed the Valve expert statement regarding the ISS. I keep hearing references to you being in Seattle. I lived in the Everett area until 2011. Now live in Vancouver, Washington. That's where my uncle is. He was a football coach and a uh, history teacher down in Vancouver, Washington. Longview, Kelso, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but come up regularly to see my kids in the area. Is there a chance we can grab a cup of microbrew one of these times? Would love to meet up, put a name to a face, and pick the brain of the man. Best regards, Steve. Uh, yeah, my time is, is pretty limited nowadays, but I, I, will, I will make an effort, sure. This one's called, yep, I want to know about the Clue 13. Mark, been reading your website today. I read all the transcripts, and I'm not able to watch the videos right now. But before I continue, let me introduce a bit. I, f I left the Matrix regarding the world shape about two months ago. Shame on me, considering I've been a Christian for the last 10 years. And by Christian, I mean it. Not that I'm boasting myself. It's just that understand what my life stands for. Even though I was one to say BS for the Flat Earth Conspiracy, then about two months ago in a Holy Spirit reunion at my church, God told me through my pastor that he was doing something in my eyes. The pastor said, even I don't know what it is, but God is working something in your eyes. Three days later on a Friday noon, I ended up randomly in a conversation with my brother in which he mentioned the Flat Earth Conspiracy. No sense. I was triggered and decided to dive in only to my total bewilderment. I started to see the sunset as it really is and spent a whole weekend in total amazement with God's creation. It hit me like a truck. Then at Sunday night, I remember about two years ago, I decided to test my faith Googling Bible contradictions just to see if that would somehow get me off guard. And for, more, for my disappointment, it did. As soon as I read about the Bible fancy belief that the world was flat, I froze. I prayed to, prayed to God, why? Why your word says so many times that the earth is flat when it is not? Oh, please allow me to understand this. Allow me to grasp the figurative language in it. Show me, please. Well, he did. Not by making me understand, but by literally showing me what was behind layers of lies covering my eyes. As a rational person, it hit me like an ape, <laughs> like an ape crazy full loaded megaton brick truck. Nice. I may have to steal that. I wonder if the two years prayer response was because I had to be mentally prepared for such a huge paradigm break. Then again, yesterday in another Holy Spirit reunion, I asked God to widen my worldview way more. So today I ended up in your website reading about the flattened earth true, but in a not so technical way as I did previously. Reading about the astronauts and their lack of interaction with the Bible really got, got me again. And then I ask you, my fellow believer, would you have any more content about this in the 13th clue? It has been a very pleasant reading. You have some nice writing skills indeed. And last but not least, I thank God for your contribution to my journey in this wicked world as I look forward to run the race and keep my faith now stronger than ever. Peace. Rodolfo Uber. His last name's actually Uber. That's cool. You know, if it was a few, uh, six minutes from now, I'd probably ended the show on this, but I eh, still get a little, little more time left. Uh, this one's called Prep Guide. Hi, Mark. Please send me a prep guide. You referenced during your last show with Patricia. Much appreciated. Keep up the good work. Oh, by the way, I really enjoy your radio interviews. I find that medium to be one of your best. Any new interviews coming up soon? Thanks, Noah. 
Uh, no, I'm being interviewed, but as far as me, I, I wait for people to call me. So if you want to be interviewed or if you have sub, a subject matter expert you think would be a good interviewee, shoot them my way. I'll talk to them. But right now, I am, I'm treating it like a ride. If it comes this way, that's where we're going. Uh, this one's called A Few Questions on Your Clues. If you please have some time. Hi, Mark. Reading your stuff for the past few days and being a Christian and believing in God, I would like to believe it is true that the earth is flat, but it is hard to prove stuff at this scale from home. I have a few questions from some of your clues. Question one, how long a nonstop flight from Australia to Argentina will take on a flat earth? Don't know. Hard to say. Because I, I think the scale, something, something's wrong with the scale. We only have part of the map. I understand what you're saying about hiding the GPS logs and routes. But what about the actual time is taking for a real non-stop stop flight between the two opposites? I think more interesting than that question really is the fact that 90-something percent of the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are not non-stops. And they should be. There's a lot of big, big ocean out there. So why aren't there, aren't there non-stops? Uh, let's see. Real time cannot be hidden or can be changed. If the flight is a nonstop flight from Australia to Argentina. It will take a long time on a flat Earth due to the opposite distance. So how do you account for time if you're on one of these flights? I don't know. I don't know because you can't prove the route. That's the tough part. You can you can ask that question all you want, but if the latitude and longitude of those flights cannot be proven, then the route can't be proven. Then it's like. I've what am I supposed to do with that? Question two, what about the magnetic poles? On a global earth, north is up and south is down, but the flat earth north is center and the south is away from the center. What then is the magnetic compass really showing us and how do we really travel the true flat earth? God bless my brother. Cheers, Ricky Sosa. Uh, yeah, the question two, that's, that's a way uh, simpler question, which is the North Pole is literally the center of the map. It's the center of the dinner plate, the center of the hubcap. Where, and that's, that's the strong magnetic force. What's really curious is when you get out to the South Pole, because I've had people, a lot of people in the South Pole, including Australian military, who says there is no magnetic South Pole. It's, you know, it's one of the old questions that we have, you know, North, in the North, Northern Hemisphere, supposedly, we, we never follow up on the question, which is how far do you have to go? I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't the compass flip over as soon as you get to South of the equator? And everybody in the South says the same thing. It's like, no, it always seems to gravitate North to when you're almost to the Antarctic coastline and it's still, you know, the North is still the most powerful thing, which makes sense because there would be no South Pole. The, the South Ring might have a weak magnetic force, but it would have to be distributed along the entire outer edge. Just saying. All right, let's see which one we're going to end on. We got a couple more we think we can do here. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's a little short. Uh, it's called Under the Dome. Hi, Mark. I am Caruso. I just want to take a minute and email you and tell you that I enjoyed your documentary. It was truly an eye-opener. I also did the Google searches as suggested. I also watched Room 237. It's on Netflix. I'm a believer and look forward to more content from you. Caruso, thank you. Fantastic. And you know what? I may shoot him a thing because I don't think he's actually seen the website. This one's called Background Music. Mark, would you please bring this up at the big conference? Why do flat earthers seem obsessed with their background music? I find it distracting and annoying. I now stop any videos that have it playing since there are now a hundred others to watch. Well, there's a lot more than that. If I look up nearly any other subject, for the most part anyway, you can watch and listen to the video without all that noise and music playing. So why mainly in the flat earth videos? I would appreciate it if you would pass that on at the conference. I have seen many other comments under videos stating that they find it annoying as well. Thank you for your great work, and I watch all of your videos. Please say hi to Patricia, too. I like the ones where you two are together on field trips. They are most enjoyable. Best regards, Steve from Chisago City, Minnesota. Uh, I don't know. Music, look, it, you got to remember that, that Hollywood, uh, with television shows and movies, background music is an important thing. What's tougher is to do it correctly. Lots of people insert music without taking uh, into account the context and they make it overpowering. Seriously, even most most videos, if you turn, I, I actually like music in, in the stuff, but you got to turn it down a little bit unless you're going for dramatic effect. Then, of course, you have to amp it up. But most people, that's the biggest problem. It's not that they have music. It's just the music's too loud. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. This one's called a couple of questions. If you'd be so kind. 
I'm uh, recent flat earther. Woke up two days ago. Cannot believe how much of the entire perception and outlook on everything has changed since I decided to look in the possibility of flat earth. Your flat earth clues videos have been the most influential source of information for me, and I can't thank you enough for making them. I am all but completely sold on flat earth. However, there's just one thing on my mind which I'd like to expel, and that's the ISS. I used to watch the live feed from time to time, and I see the apparatus flowing around floating around the outside of the station as if they were not it was not affected by so-called gravity with a curved path in the background. Is there an explanation for this? Yeah, CGI. Plain and simple. It is special effects. Also, I used to have an app on my phone which tracked the station and informed me when it would be passing over my town in England. When the time came, I would look up and see the bright light cruising overhead for about 20 minutes until it was out of sight. If this wasn't the ISS, what was I seeing? Well, you're seeing something. I'm, you know, and might be they might actually call it the ISS, but there's no people up there. There's nobody living up there. It's it's just a light going across the sky. No, really, not that much different than a star, actually. I'm not trying to be skeptical or doubtful in any way, as I'm pretty certain the Earth is not a ball. I just want to clear this last issue, and I have and free myself from the control and conditioning that I've been fallen victim to for the last 34 years. Kind regards, Mark out of England, I believe. Looks like that's what the area code is. And yeah, uh, Mark, if you really want to get in more into that, take a take a quick look at a whole bunch of Jaren's videos and Globebusters videos. They've done a ton of stuff on the ISS and a ton of stuff going after NASA. That's how, what I would look at first. This one's called, you know what, we're just gonna end on this one. This one's called You Da Man. Uh, Mark, pumping out great stuff. Two interviews and a QA and a in a few days. Keep it coming, thanks. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. Uh, I do what I can, and with that, if anyone else wants to send questions, and I got a lot of them, I, I know one day I'm not going to be able to really read as many emails as I'm doing right now, but it's the, by far the best way of getting a hold of me. You can email me your questions at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will read them here as time permits weather permitting when I get to it anyway till then guys in fact will this one uh, you know what no this won't be my last one before the conference I think I'll do one more for the conference anyway until then stay flat